Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can use our Fretix 1D image analysis software to actually analyze and quantify the bands within a lateral flow test. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can use our Fretix 1D image analysis software to quantify the bands present in lateral flow tests. This is especially useful for those working in R&D environments when they're trying to develop their own lateral flow tests for quick and easy diagnostics. So as you can see here, I've got on this image, I've got lots of different variations of lateral flow tests, different combinations of antibody and antigen concentrations. Now, what I would want to do in this kind of, if I was designing a new lateral flow test is, I would want to know what is the, the lowest concentration of antigen that I can detect in a sample, and what kind of concentration do I need on my, uh, of antibody on my strip to kind of get a lower le limit of detection of antigen that I, I would deem acceptable within kind of a population to make the test valid. So at the top across this image, we've got a control strip and I'm sure you've all used a lateral flow test before or a pregnancy test, something like that. They always have a control strip to make sure that the test is working correctly. And then we have different intensities of bands below, which will relate to different levels of antibody, uh, antibody on the strip or antigen in the sample. Now, if I just run through this, you can see that we're in the, the if you've seen any of my videos on Fretix 1D before, you know the kind of the image setup window. And we've got our 3D view here where we can see our control bands and all of our sample bands here. So if I want to come through and quantify this, I would come through to the lanes mode. Now, rather than this being a 1D gel or block, there's obviously it's separate lateral flow tests. So I don't know how well the automatic lane detection is going to work, but let's give it a go. It's actually done a pretty good job of it. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to use the area of interest setting just to narrow down my field of view for where I want my automatic lane detection to look within my image to detect the edges of the lanes. No, as you can see, this is probably going to have to be a manual one, which is fine. So if I grab a new box, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten lanes on my image. And I'll just edit this to make sure it matches the size of my image, where my bands are. Come through here. Now, I don't need to make this very strict because I think that the, the background removal and my band detection algorithm is going to work fine here. So if I come through to my background detection and if I select rolling ball and if I have a look through the different lanes, I think rolling balls, yeah, rolling balls done a really good job here of just detecting my peaks but taking out the gaps in between and that's because this image is really clean the bands are very strong the space between the band bands is very white there's a stark difference between what is a band and what isn't a band so it's done a really good job of picking out what is a band and what isn't just using the the default settings on the rolling ball background subtraction method so i'm happy with that molecular weight mode i don't need to concern myself with because it's a lateral flow test it's not got a molecular weight marker on it so I'll come straight through to bands. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go for the default band detection setting. Now, if I come through and just zoom in, I can see that it's not, it's had a hard time kind of separating some areas. So let's go for the low intensity and the high intensity, let's see. So I think actually it's going to be much easier to just draw these bands in manually. So if I come through, and if I just bring up my first lane, so if I just kind of drag this around, so I'm just going to left click and drag, and this is my first so this is the, this first band on each image, on each lateral flow test is the control band. 
So I'm just going to left click and drag and bring these across and release them just to define those as my lanes. As you can see, they're, they're very obvious peaks within my lateral flow test strips. Left click lane two, and again, we've got our control strip here. We've got all of our different lanes here. And it really is just as easy as holding left click, dragging across the, the peaks, the data. So what you're doing here is you're essentially drawing bands rather than to the image you're, you're drawing bands to the the actual intensity data itself uh, which can be a much easier way to pull out peaks of interest rather than relying on an image now i'm not going to bore you with doing all of that but as you can see as i've done all of my bands there i'm starting to build up my volume measurements which is to say the intensity of my peaks so I've also got the option to normalize my results. So if I wanted to express all of my, um, if I wanted to express the intensity of my bands to say my control band, I could set my control band, just left click here on my control band and set that as 100%. And turn on my normalized volume. And then I could see that for example, this band here has is 32% as intense, shall we say, or has 32% of the volume of my control band. I've got a band here that is 37%, 43%, 57%, 83%. So if those were if those were different antibodies, for example, I was trying to work out which antibody has the greatest sensitivity to the antigen that I had treated this strip with. I would say that it is the bottom. It, it is the bottom uh, band that has shown the greatest intensity, therefore the greatest sensitivity for my antibody to my antigen for that particular antibody. We can also, if we had standards within our lateral flow tests, so we had, say, the control band we knew was 100 picograms of a certain protein or of our certain antigen, we could or, or if we had multiple bands, we could select multiple bands and then build a standard curve. So let's say our control band is 100 femtograms of some protein, whatever it is, or an antigen. And then our second band down is 50 femtograms of a random antigen that we're trying to develop a lateral flow test against. And our third band down is, say, 20. We would then be able to fit our our line. We would find a line a best fit that matched that kind of um, those changing intensities, and then that would tell us in our other bands what is being detected in femtograms or picograms or whatever it is that you've set up your standard curve, your quantity curve to 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 align with. So as we've gone through, we've been able to build up a picture and convert the intensity of our bands within a lateral flow test into information and then depending on your experimental setup you'll be able to use that information to make informed choices about the lower level of detection the highest level of detection which of your antibodies is the most sensitive to your antigen how small a sample size do you need versus an expected concentration within that sample size if you know kind of for example if you're making a COVID-19 test as we all know the kind of the biggest success story of lateral flow tests in recent memory. If you know the kind of the minimum concentration that you would expect to find in a positive patient and you need to develop towards that, you could use the information that we've pulled out of our image here in your experimental setup to find out, you know, you need to add two drops of saliva for this test to be valid, for there to be a high enough concentration in a positive patient for an experimental result. So that's the kind of information that we can use, that we can pull out of our image using Foretics 1D. Now, all of these, these figures here, this information that is part of our results table, we can get our background information, we can get all of this different information and build up this table and turn it on or off.
but we can also copy this to our clipboard so we can paste it into another piece of software Excel, MATLAB, something, some other statistical package or we can uh, export it as a CSV again straight into Excel for use in other programs it's completely open format as all of Total Lab software is it's completely equipment agnostic it will work with major file types within life science and we can also export a full PDF report and if you see my other videos you'll have seen what those PDF report looks like but what we can also do is if we connected this Fretics 1D our Fretics 1D software with our 21 CFR solution Total Lab GXP we would be able to use this within um, a regulated environment I'm going to do a separate video on that um, but I just wanted to let you know that there is a 21 CFR compliant variant for this so if you were working in a medical device company or a regulated industry that needs to be FDA compliant EU Annex 11 compliant uh, GAMP 5 compliant all the kind of compliance you require and all the kind of audit trails electronic sign-ins things like that that you require to make diagnostic devices within medical industries as ever thanks for watching and if you'd like to try out Fretix 1D within your lab with your lateral flow data, please check out the links in the description below.